How was the Prophet Muhammad as a husband and father? The Prophet, peace be upon him, he was a, a great husband and a father. His wives used to love him so much and used to uh, respect him and revere him uh, so much, peace be upon him. And uh, he was very uh, kind and very uh, good in his uh, character uh, with them, uh, peace be uh, upon him. He would say, if you entered home, then uh, give the greetings of peace, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you or upon you. That will be a source of a blessing for yourself and for the members of your uh, family. Uh, he would be in the service of uh, his uh, family uh, members and he will tend to their uh, needs. And he was very faithful to his first wife, Khadija, peace be uh, upon him and may Allah be pleased with her. Khadija was one of the first supporters and he was so faithful to her to a point that even long after she passed away, he was still um, looking after and giving gifts to her friends. And he would say, these are the friends of uh, Khadija. Uh, may Allah be pleased uh, with her. So when it comes to our Prophet, may peace be upon him, marrying and respecting women and showing himself as a husband and showing love to his wife, respect to his wife. When he Aisha radiallahu anha, may, may be Allah pleased with her, she had her menses. Of course, women at that time are a little bit near the hormone imbalances and so on. It would be very sensitive. So our Prophet, may peace upon him, would take the glass that she would drink from after she placed it. He would take the same glass, turn it around, and look where she placed her lips and would put his lips around that area, would drink from it. Isn't that amazing to show her that even at that time, I love you. He says, Ruzik to hubbaha to her wife. He declared it to the world. Amazingly enough, he used to have a foot race with her. He used to have fun with her. Isn't that amazing? He just said that this is the best thing that ever happened to you. This is the treasure of the earth. The best thing in life. The treasure of life. The pleasure of life. He goes this way. Of course you understand when our Prophet, may peace be upon him, used to even pray. He would ask permission. This was the voluntary prayer at night. Even though it's her night. He says, do you permit me to pray? And she would actually be with them. He would pl place her hand to put her feet in so he could prostrate. He would share everything with her. They would bait together, fun together, run together, walk together. He would carry on her back to watch even the dancers. He would share things with her, like the secrets, everything that would do. As he would say, will you not be happy that you will be my wife in the hereafter? Not just in this life. There was no jealousy. He would explain to her, he would understand what she feels like. Amazingly enough, even his daughter, he used to stand up for her, Fatima radiallahu anha, may God Almighty be pleased with him, and all his family and companions. Regarding his uh, children, uh, mostly he had uh, girls. Uh, he had uh, sons, but they passed away uh, in his life. And also his daughters, they passed away, uh, all of them in his life, except for uh, his daughter Fatima, who uh, stayed like about six months uh, after him. So uh, when Fatima, uh, may Allah be pleased with her, she would come to visit him, he would get up, he would welcome her, he would kiss her, and he would have her come and sit in his seat. He used to stand up when his Fatima comes in, and he would kiss her on her forehead and give him her place. Isn't that amazing? He used to cover her with her own clothes. He loved her so much. He loved all of his children, of course. And he was fair and just to all of them. And uh, when he would go to visit her, she would do the same uh, thing to him. She will uh, grab him by the hand, she will kiss him, and she will bring him and have him uh, sit in uh, her uh, place. People think like, oh, Islam has um, arranged marriages and stuff like that, when it's like, you know, sure, there's uh, there's times where there's problems with that, and, and there's women that are married to people that they shouldn't be, but like that 
has nothing to do with the religion. That's, that's a cultural thing. You could look at tons of cultures where women get married off. It's kind of funny to think like, oh, there's this conception that Islam has to do with, you know, unromantic, unloved arranged marriages when the rest of society was doing the exact same thing, you know? It's, uh, it's funny. The way that they talk about the relationship between Muhammad and his wife makes it seem as though it wasn't the norm at that time. They make it seem as though the way that he treated his wife and his daughter was something that was unheard of between spouses, which is very interesting and sad to think that that was something that wasn't seen with the majority of people. I may just be reading between the lines or trying to infer something, but that's what I'm getting from that. So for that segment, it just reminded me about working with the young people and the families that um, practice Islam. And for me, it was really just um, a real reflection of the, the love that I see amongst the families that I work with and the endearment towards each other and the devotion to the family unit um, and really the devotion to the community as a whole. In terms of mom, it seemed like he was very, very endearing and he had a lot of respect for the woman in his life for sure, whether it be his wife or his daughter. And I also see that with the families that I work with. Um, the fathers are very, very endearing and very protective of their daughters for sure. And um, that's definitely, I think, I think as a foundation, um, a practice and um, I think like a, a realization within Islam in terms of making sure that that family unit is strong and, and really based in the Islamic faith because that's definitely impacting that relationship and that devotion to keeping the family unit strong and really putting their family first. <laughs>